Hi, I'm Jeff Brown from The Grill Outdoors, and today we're coming at you from Brown Nose Design Worldwide Shop Headquarters. I'm also Jeff Brown of Brown Nose Design. I do freelance scenic and lighting design for theaters, as well as design and fabrication for museum exhibits and fabricating scenery for other museums as well. But today, we are gonna be building the walleye grillscape from this step-by-step -step assembly instruction packet made by the Grill Outdoors, available at Etsy. We'll put the uh, link to the Etsy site in the description, but anyways, this has instructions, tools you'll need, material list, cut list, and then it goes step-by-step -step of how to build it. So let's build it, it's gonna be awesome. So I already went ahead and cut all the material to length, drilled some pilot holes, and inserted the screws already to try to expedite this. So I'm gonna go buy the instructions that we created, and let's get to step one. Step one, we are going to assemble the counter and base frame. So I have the counter frame right here, so I'm gonna slap it together. My handy dandy screw gun. So I already got this pre-drilled, but you'll just line up your edges, make sure that they're nice and tidy, and let's go for it. It's going to get noisy, so I'm putting on ear protection. All right, starting at one end. What I'm doing too is these screws are pre-drilled in here. And I'm just lining up where the screws are, so they're just going down the center of where the 2x4 is. So let's do it. With lumber, not everything's perfect, so this is going to be the top edge, so I'm making sure that these are flush in the top edge. If they're off a little on the bottom, I'm cool with that. So. You might have noticed that one is a little stubborn, but just back out your screw, put her back in. Eventually you'll get it in there and it'll be flush. So to keep it easy for myself, I'm now just gonna flip this over, grab my other piece so I can keep the work area on the same side. I'm an old man, the less moving the better. So, all right, so let's put together this side of the frame. All right, we got our counter frame together. Let's set up and put our bottom frame together. I'll just pull this off. Set it down here because it's gonna be coming back up here in a second, so. All right, let's grab our frame pieces for the bottom. Again, all these measurements are in the packet, where to place everything, so. Try to think of everything I could. Now I'm using green treated lumber. You can use cedar or other composite materials, but I like this good old green treated lumber. And then when I put these together, green treated you wanna let sit for a year or so, just so the moisture gets out before you stain it. So we'll let it go one season and then like stain it the next season. So that's how I do it. Everybody's got their own way of doing things and that's fine too. Some of this is pretty wet, man. <laughs> it's like, hey, I weigh three pounds. Hey, I weigh 40 pounds. It's one of those when you're lifting weights and 
no label on it, and all of a sudden you realize you picked one up that was too much for you. But you're trying to be super cool, pretend like it's not that heavy. And then you're like, oh my God, I got one rep. Done. All right, step one is complete. Check mark. Booyah. Uh, step two, we're gonna attach the posts. Set our top frame or the counter frame on top of our bottom frame. And you'll see why I'm doing this in a second. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna attach the four by four posts that hold it up the roof and the uh, lower part. Well, that's weird. I gotta move this one over just a little bit. I was eyeballing it. Probably should really measure it. That's why you use screws and not nails. You can pull them out. There we go. Now it's happy. Sweet. Even though that one really doesn't go there. All right. So I'm going to attach these with carriage bolts. But to first just put everything in place, I'm just going to use some three inch screws just to temp it in to make sure it's all copacetic. And then once everything's copacetic and happy, then I'm gonna slam some uh, carriage bolts in there and hold this thing together like it was built for roughhousing. I don't know what that means. All right, so I'm just gonna come and put one screw in the bottom of each of these, making sure they're flushed up and pushed into the corner as best as possible. Do the same thing over here. Ow, ow, that hurt. All right, I got those two in. Now, this is the back four by four assembly that'll hold up the roof. Whew, these things are heavy. So again, I'm gonna just temp this in with one screw. Again, pushing it in flush. Let's get this screw started. We'll do the same thing over here. pitch of the roof is going that way. So make sure your beam goes that way. I don't even know if you can see it on the video. Anyhow. All right, let's shove this bad boy in the corner. All right, now we're going to lift this up and have my lovely wife come over here and help me. So this is Lindsay, happily married for almost 22 years. Awesome. Let's hold tight for one sec. I'm going to start these in. So the counter, this frame is sitting flush with the top of this, which is 20, two foot five and a half. So I'm gonna actually measure up on these, two foot five and a half as well. All right, so now you can go down on this end. Go down on this end, please. 
We're just going to lift it up until this is flush. Just the upper frame. Yep, top frame. Probably want two people to do this project, obviously. All right, let's lift it up together. All right. Okay, can you just hold, just kind of hold yours there for right now? So again, the idea is we're just temping this in, make sure it's all working before we really go for it. All right, let go of this. Let go, please. Cool. Hey, hi, hello, above. So anyways, we got this temped in, feels pretty good. I'm gonna now drill in the carriage bolts and secure it for good. So here we go. I got three inch or three eighth inch carriage bolts. I got this super long drill bit because it's all I have, but I'm gonna put two carriage bolts in each one of these. All right, let's do it. Great, we got the new memory card in the camera, so let's continue on our merry mission. I realized that I didn't have long enough um, carriage bolts to go in the other end. So I was gonna to run to the hardware store, but I'm gonna take a spade bit and bore out the inside. Then we can use the bolts we have. So let's put in the carriage bolts and get this thing tidied up. All right, here we go. Loud noises, hammer. All right. Now, up there, I have another two by four on the inside of the four by four. So I'm gonna bore that out with the spade bit so that my carriage bolts will be long enough. Pro tip, when drilling through wet wood, get a bigger battery. All right, I think I got it drilled out. That was fun. Now I'm going to put a washer, lock washer, and a nut on the end of each carriage bolt. And then we'll tighten them down. All right, I'm just gonna get them all started here. Once I get them started, I'll come back through the impact driver and tighten them all up. So let me tell you a little story. I'm 52 years old. I've been doing theater for 30 years of my life. Enjoy the heck out of it. I actually was going to school, a community college, and I had to take public speaking or I could take tech theater to graduate. So I took tech theater, fell in love with it. I'd been roading with bands, you know, just local bar bands and running sound and doing stuff like that. So I just kind of fell naturally into theater, enjoyed the heck out of it, and actually made a career out of it. Traveling around, doing lighting designs, scenic designs, and all that, and then I was a production manager for a theater company, which meant that I was in charge of all the technical elements. Kind of in charge. Scenic, props, lighting, costumes, sound, special effects, just general whatnots, and I enjoyed that as well. But then I had a friend of mine that was opening up a children's museum. 
And he gave me a call and he's like, Jeff, would you come down and help me finish off this museum? Call you the finisher? And I said, well, let me talk to my wife, and my daughter, and let's see. Now we all agreed to it. It was about five years ago. It's gonna get loud for a minute here. Oops, came off. Let's try to get that on there again. Some of these are pretty tight. I should have got longer bolts, but. Anyways, we opened up that museum and I found my passion. So much value to have passion in your life. And I found it and started doing children's museums and other museums as well and it was really fun and the legacy is there too like it lasts a long time so your children and hopefully someday grandchildren this one's really tight hold on I gotta hit this some more you can come and see the museum and leave your legacy but anyway so that was fun and been doing that and traveling around doing theater still. But then we got a global pandemic. Kind of shut down museums and theater. I was pretty bummed for a while and I was sitting around and it's like, what can I do? How can I apply these skills that I already have into some new venture? That's when I started the grill outdoors. All my life, I've loved to grill. I've loved to smoke food. I love to bop back and forth a lot between jobs and projects. But I was like, let's dive into this world and see what it's all about. So I've been working with a friend of mine um, and we've been developing some grillscapes, which this, the walleye, is actually one of those. We have bigger ones. And smaller ones, we're, we're, we're starting to get them out on Etsy. Hold on, loud noise. Out on Etsy, and uh, I got a website, thegrilloutdoors.com. Check it out. I never claim to be an expert. I just know a lot of stuff about grilling, about theater. Ask me questions about theater. Ask me questions about grilling. I'll give you an honest answer. I have integrity. I'll also tell you the value of a good high five and a rock kick too. There's two things you need in life. It's a high five and a rock kick. So, but anyways, we started making these grill scapes and this is a small one that you can wheel in and out of your garage. You fit your Weber. You can design other custom ones too if you want. You got a bigger grill, a smaller grill, two grills, three grills, 47 grills. You tell me, mount it on the back of a semi or not. How'd you like to have this? It's like driving down the street in a limo, pulling your grill scape. So anyways, we can do permanent ones for your backyard, mobile ones, anything. Um, that's what we do. Super stoked, super fun. And uh, I truly believe too, you gotta have fun in life or it's not worth living. So that's what we're trying to do. Have a little bit of fun and live life. Hopefully make life a little bit more enjoyable for somebody else too. Loud noise. Really should have gotten longer bolts for this. Hindsight's always 20-20, but we'll get through. All right, some of those were a little pain in the butt to get on there. But that's why I prototype to make sure things actually work. Note to self, longer carriage bolts. But hey, we made it through step two. And now we're gonna move on to step three where we're gonna be putting on the lids, countertops, whatever you wanna call them, on the next step. So 
I'm gonna change out the uh, memory card here real quick and we'll be back. All right, we got the new memory card in, so let's continue to step three, which is cut and assemble the floor and counter boards. Like I said, I already got them pre-cut, pre-drilled. So let's start putting them in. And also on this, I created a spacer, quarter inch spacer. In theory, that's what should between them, be between the boards. I thought they were three and a half inch because they're one by four, but some are three and three quarters, some are three and a half, some are three and five eighths. So I laid them all out, measured the total distance, measured the distance that we need here, divided that by seven, came up with a quarter inch. Took about four times to figure it out, but we'll see if it works. So, all right, let's put on the planks. All right, the first couple here I notched out because they're gonna be going between these four by fours. So let's just start this. What I'm doing too is just putting one screw in right now to make sure they all fit. And then if they all fit, then I'll come back, put all the screws in and tidy it up. So, cool. Do not want to get ahead of ourselves. Hey Tim, if you watch this episode, you're out moving snow for us. Super appreciate it. Peace, brother. So now I'm gonna put on the top planks. Again, I notched out around the four by four. Um, little casualty here. That's the beauty of glue. I can just glue that in, and put a screw through it and we'll be fine. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna tighten down or put these two down. And then the beauty of this is not having the four by fours in the front. We can put that one, the plank on the front there with our half inch lip and then work between those, the front one and this one and make sure that we have the right space. So, here I go. Cool, we got the top on, top planks. Now I gotta mark out a circle so that I can cut that out to insert my 22 inch kettle grill. And it's gonna go over here between these braces underneath there. So I'm gonna get that marked out. One foot, 10 and a half. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come and measure this which we have 31 inches, which would give us 15 and a half. So this is basically our center point from front to back. And then I'm gonna just look at this. We're looking at 26 inches between these lines. So that'll put me at 13 to give me that center line. So this should be the center of the circle that we're gonna cut out. I'm left-handed, so I'm putting my kettle on here because I like my accoutrements, whatever you call it on this side. Beauty of this though, if you get the plan or whatever, is you can do whichever side you like. So just flip your frame and you're good. You could buy a left-handed one and switch it to right-handed or back and forth. It'd be a lot of work, but you could do it. 
All right, so to draw the circle, what I'm gonna do is take a screw, put it at my center point. Take my tape measure. We're doing one foot, 10 and a half. Half of that is 11 and a quarter inches, I do believe. So I'm gonna put a mark at 11 and a quarter. The end of the tape measure has a little hole in it, so you can put that over a screw. And the carpenter pencil, if you have a pencil like this, will fit into your tape measure, into the belt loop hook, just like that. I don't go too far below the tape measure. It's pretty tight. Get it like that. Put your tape measure on here. Lock down your tape measure. Get it on your mark. All right. Now we can draw our circle. This wood is really wet, so it's hard to get the lines on it. Well, we'll get through it. We as in I, us, we're a team, man. We're in this together. We all wanna be successful, right? So, I'm gonna measure this out. Feels like it's more like 22 inches, which is odd. So, I'm gonna pop this out. I want it a little bit bigger than the kettle. I have my mark there, but it's just, oh, I know what's going on. I got to measure from the center. Center of the screw. Bring that out. There we go. Now we got it. Pro tip, measure from the center of the screw. Now we're cooking with gas. I prefer charcoal, but everybody's got their preferences. Sarcasm. It's pretty weak sarcasm. <laughs> All right. Sweet. Now we'll measure it. Booyah. We are good. So let's get our Pencil out of here, which is super easy. Pull out our screw. Just because I like to check things out, I'm going to set the kettle on it just to make sure. Feels good. Right. Ear protection. Eye protection. Just for funsies, let's drill a pilot hole, the biggest pilot hole we can for our drill. Let's also try to use the dullest spade bit you can find in the shop. All right. Take our jigsaw, let's cut her up. Time to move on to step four, making a roof frame. I'm cutting out the angle braces to hold up the roof, which I already have here, our angle braces. So I'm not sure where to build this. Um, just gonna be quick. It's just another frame similar to what we did for these two frames. So I'm just gonna make room behind here, knock out that frame real quick, and then we'll get it installed on here.
Cool. We have the roof frame. So the roof has three sheets of tin that are going across it. So the tin overlaps and that's where I have these seams. It's where the tin overlaps so then we can put our roofing screws in there once we get it mounted. So, all right, we're gonna switch out the memory card, come back, put the roof on. Moving on to step five. We are now gonna attach the roof to the post and attach the angle bracing. So, let's do that. I'm gonna use some temp screws here just to temp it in. Again, like I did when I was putting this together, just to make sure everything's copacetic before we actually go for it. So I'm gonna put a screw in first. All right. Let's tilt this up. So what I was looking for is to make sure I was matching the angle in the back here that we had pre-cut into our four by four. And I'll come over here. Tap that in. All right, you seem like you're going on the same trajectory. Can you hold that tight? Great. Thanks, lens. Now, I'm gonna check to make sure these work. Wouldn't you know it, my temporary brace is in the way. All right, so I'm just gonna take the brace, flip it to the other side. Still feel pretty good. Might as well check my angle brace while I'm here. Actually a little bit long. I'm gonna cut this like that. Just cut this front corner off. I'm hitting up in the top there. Let's see if this feels better. Oh yeah, that's awesome. So, let's fix the other one. I'll make all these adjustments on the packet. Because I care about you. I want you to be successful. Again, I'm gonna just tap this in. Hey, Lens, you wanna come and help me? But it's gotta come up, just keep it flush. Feels good there, does it, to you? Yes. All right, hold it there. Just chill for now. I just wanna eyeball that to see where I need to start it. All right, feel good? Again, just a temp screw in. That should be fine. In theory, both sides should be the same, but do a measurement, 15 and a half. All right, let's do it again. Get it on your mark. You know. You tight? Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you. So just for fun, I'm gonna measure these. See if they're the same. Just knock it around a little bit, the brace until I feel like they're the same height. Probably as close to the first time. 44 and three quarters. 44 and three quarters. 
All right, so now I'm gonna secure the angle braces and the whole roof mechanism, I guess. Um, I think I'll start with putting the two carriage bolts through the back. Get those in, because in theory they should relieve some of the pressure tension, if you will. So again, like we did down here, washer, lock washer, and a nut on each one. Great. I got the back carriage bolts on. Now I'm gonna put six inch, quarter inch lag through the back of the four by four into the angle brace. I'll secure it down here, and then I'll come back and put two lag screws with a washer, lock washer, and nut on the front. Should secure our roof into place. I'm gonna drill a quarter inch pilot hole for my lag screw. Pew pew, pew pew, pew pew. Look like I am uh, in Star Trek. Star Wars? I don't know. Probably neither, Jeff. Probably neither. Great. It's feeling pretty solid. We're on to step six, getting exciting. We're getting close to the end. We're gonna attach a back ledge that could double as a shelf. I'll need Lindsay to help me again. So this four by four, we are going to attach with the bottom at this line. Bottom, top. Do top at that line. Actually, let me think. If I wanted to reach out, yeah. Top is at this line, and again, not again. I'm gonna take two six inch legs and put them through to attach this. You can put small items on the top of this. You could put hooks on here to hang your grilling utensils, put beer can opener down here, something like that. You can accessorize it, customize it, make it your own. Welcome to my grillscape. What you doing? That's me acting. That's theater. All right, focus. Back on topic. So I need to get my tape measure. So if this is where we're going, we got three and a half inches. Trying to figure out where to put, let's go up three quarter, down three quarter. That's where we're gonna put our lag screws. Sorry, I'm focused. This is hyper focused, putting in my measurements. All right, I got this side marked. We'll come over here and mark this side. Here and here. Center, center. Center, center. All right, drill my pilot holes here real quick. Okay, let's get these started. So when we get into position, we're ready to rock. Rock. Echo. Sweet. This is like the heaviest piece of wood ever, man. All right, lift it up into place. Come back so I can slide mine in. Like just, yep. Just get it on a little bit. Okay, slide it in.
Woo! Lindsay saved the day. I had two marks. Not the best choice. All right, thanks. All right, we're gonna switch out our memory chip and come back and finish this bad boy up. So, for this step, putting on the roof, I have three panels of 10. They're 26 by three feet. Um, they cover up 24 inches. This is five foot 11. So we might have to adjust a little bit on the end. We'll see how we land. But I have some roofing screws and I'm basically gonna put four down each brace, rafter, whatever. So, all right, let's start it. I'm gonna start down here in the corner. Put my first one in. So I'm gonna do this edge, and then as I go, making sure I'm squaring everything up as I go, best I can. All right. Next, I'll put on this corner. Feels good. Like everything I've done, I'm just putting two in, doing the corners and then moving to the next one just to make sure that they work out before I commit. Now we'll move to our final panel. See how we land over here. Sweet. I just overlapped one more and we are like good to go. So I'll put the first screw in down here like I did in the other ones. We'll do the one on top. All right, it feels good. I'm gonna go through and put four up each rafter. I think I'll put one in the center on each one too, just to help secure it. All right, that was, oh my gosh. I'm at the ladder, you can see me again now. So that was step seven, attaching the roof. Now we're going to go to step nine and attach the casters. I think we're gonna turn that camera off for a minute because I think we're gonna have to go to a different angle since we're gonna be working on the ground now, so. All right. So for this grill scape, I'm going with the locking swivel caster and a straight caster. So I'm gonna put straight casters on one end, the swivel casters on the other end. So let's put them on. I'm using four quarter inch, uh, how long did I choose? Inch and a half lag screws for each caster. For four inch and a half lag screws per caster. I don't know what I said, but that's what I meant to say. Just eyeballing it real quick, making sure it's straight, putting them fairly close to the edge so that they have enough, as much width that I can give them to help stabilize the grill skates. I'm gonna grab a little extender so I can get these in there better. Extender achieved.
Just had a bolt head snap on me, so I gotta pull that out of here real quick. Back in business. Great. We have the casters on. I'm gonna get this flipped over and then put on some angle braces that'll hold the grill in place. This bad boy will be done. Pretty sweet. Okay, we're at the final step. I'm going to attach some three quarter inch by three inch corner braces. I actually cut this down to two inches, but they originally were three inches. And I ground down the edge a little bit so it'll fit underneath the lip of the grill, the kettle grill, the Weber over there, and put a little bit of electrical tape just on the end so I won't scratch the grill. So I'm gonna mount four of these. And in theory, let's hope we can slide the grill in on top of it. So, all right, I'm gonna get these attached. Great. Got them in, I'm just gonna flex them a little bit, bend them in a little so that they'll come in underneath the grill. All right, I'm gonna grab the grill and get it on here. See what it looks like. I'm super excited how this turned out. It's solid, it's not tippy, it's mobile. Push it in and out of your garage. Push it on over to your neighbors for all that matters, but the walleye by the Grill Outdoors. So again, as I said at the beginning, the assembly packet will be on Etsy. Um, again, we'll put a link down in the description, but check it out. It gives you step-by-step -step instructions to build this bad boy. So if you like this video, feel free to like and subscribe to my channel. Check out my website, The Grill Outdoors or Brown Nose Design. Um, I have recipes, other YouTube videos. We just have kind of a fun time. So, all right, be fabulous. Paddle faster, paddle faster, faster, paddle faster, paddle faster, paddle, paddle. Here we go. Welcome to the county parade, parade. Parade! Welcome to the parade! Where are you going? To save the world!